Um, O3 Mini is a thing that we're really, really excited about, and Hong Yu, who trained the model, will come out and join us. Hey. Hey, Seth. How are you? Hey. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Hong Yu Ren. I'm an open air researcher uh, working on reasoning. So um, this September, we released O1 Mini, uh, which is an efficient reasoning model that in the O1 family that's really capable of uh, math and coding, probably among the best in the world, given the low cost. So now, together with O3, I'm very happy to uh, tell you more about uh, O3 Mini, which is a brand new model in the O3 family that truly defines a new cost-efficient reasoning frontier. It's incredible. Um, yeah, though it's not uh, available to our users today, we are opening access to the model to uh, our safety and uh, security researchers to test the model out. Um, with the release of adaptive thinking time in the API a couple of days ago, for O3 Mini, we'll support three different options, low, medium, and high reasoning effort. So the users can freely adjust the uh, thinking time based on their different use cases. So for example, for some, we may want the model to think longer for co more complicated problems and uh, uh, think shorter uh, with like simpler ones. Um, with that, I'm happy to show the first set of emails of O3 Mini. Um, so on the left-hand side, we show the coding emails. So it's like code forces yellow, which measures how good a programmer is. Uh, and the higher is better. So as we can see on the plot, with more thinking time, O3 Mini is able to have like increasing yellow, all outperforming O1 Mini. And with like median thinking time, it's able to match even better than O1. Yes, yeah, so it's like for an order of magnitude more speed and cost, we can deliver the same code performance even, on this even, or even at better least. Or even experience, better. right? So although it's like the O3 Mini high is still like a couple hundred points away from Mark. It's not far. That's better than me, probably. Um, but just an incredible sort of cost to performance gain yeah, uh, over exactly. what we've been able to offer with O1. And I think people will really love this. Yeah, I hope so. So on the right-hand plot, we show the estimated cost versus code forces zero trade-off. Uh, so it's pretty clear that O3 Mini defines like a new uh, cost-efficient reasoning frontier on coding. Uh, so it's achieved like better performance, compared to better performance than O1, with a fraction of cost. Amazing. Uh, with that being said, um, um, I would like to do a live demo. That sounds great. <laughs> on O3 Mini. Uh, so, um, and hopefully you can test out all the three different like low, medium, high uh, sure. thinking time great. of the model. <laughs> so let me paste the prompt. Um, so I'm testing out O3 Mini High first, and the task is that I'm asking the model to uh, use Python to implement a code generator and executor. So if I launch this, uh, run this like Python script, it will launch a server um, in the, uh, locally with a with a with a UI that contains a text box, and then we can uh, make coding requests in a text box it will send the request to call O3 Mini API, and O3 Mini API will solve the task and return a piece of code, and it will then uh, save the code locally on my desktop, and then open a terminal to execute the code automatically. So it's a very complicated, pretty complicated steps. task, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and it outputs like a big chunk of code. So if, if we copy the code and paste it to our server, and then we would like to run, launch this server. So we should get a text box when you're launching it. Yeah. Okay, great. Oh yeah, I, see I hope so. so. Yeah. It seems to be launching something. Um, okay. Oh, great. We have, a, we have a UI where we can enter some coding prompts. Let's mm -hmm. try out a simple one, like print open the eye and a random number. Met. So it's sending the request to O3 Mini Medium, so it should be pretty fast, right? So on this 41. terminal, yeah, 41, that's the <laughs> magic number, right? <laughs> so it saves the generated code to this like local script um, on the desktop and the print out opening in 41. Um, is there any other tasks you guys want to try, test it out? 
I wonder if you could get it to get its own GPQA numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's a great ask, just as what I expected. In fact, yeah. a lot yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so now let me copy the code. And send it in the code UI. So um, in this task, we asked the model to evaluate O3 Mini with the low reasoning effort on this hard GPQA data set. And the model needs to first download the, the, the raw file from this URL. And then it needs to figure out which part is a question, which part is a, um, which part is the answer, and or which part is the options, right? Yes. And then formulate all the questions and to and then ask the model to answer it and then parse the result and then to grade it. That's uh, actually blazingly fast. Yeah, and it's actually really fast because it's mm -hmm. calling the L3 mini with low reasoning effort. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. It's two tests are yeah. really hard here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the long tail is yeah. open the problem. So let's um, go. Yeah, GPQA is a hard data set. Yes. Yeah, it contains like maybe 196 easy problems and two really hard problems. <laughs> Um, While we're waiting for this, do you want to show the, yeah. what the request was again? Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually returns the results. Oh, it's 61.62%, uh, right? 64%, right? Cool, it's cool. a low reasoning effort model, and it's mm -hmm. actually pretty fast. Then full evaluation in, the, uh, in the, a minute. And Somehow very cool to like just ask a model to evaluate itself like yeah, this. Yeah, exactly, right? And if we just summarize what we just did, we asked the model to write a script to evaluate itself um, through, uh, on this like hard GPQA data set uh, from a UI, right, from this code generator and executor created by the model itself in the first place. Next year, we're going to bring yeah. you on and you're going to have to improve, ask the model to improve itself. Yeah, yeah let's definitely <laughs> ask the model to improve it next time. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, <laughs> um, so um, besides code forces and GPQA, the model is also a pretty good um, um, math model. So we, we show on this plot, uh, with like on this AME 2024 data set, O3 Mini Low achieves um, comparable performance with O1 Mini, and O3 Mini Median achieves like comparable better performance than O1 if we check the solid bar, which are pass ones. And we can further push the performance with O3 Mini High, mm -hmm. right? And on the right-hand side plot, when we measure the latency on this like anonymized O1 preview traffic, we show that O3 Mini Low drastically reduce the latency of O1 Mini, right? Almost like achieving comparable latency with uh, GPT-4.0. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's under a second, so probably it's like instant mm -hmm. response. Uh, and O3 Mini Median is like half the latency of O1. Um, and here's another set of evals that I'm even more excited to, to show you guys is um, uh, API features, right? We get a lot of requests from our developer communities to support like function calling, structured outputs, developer messages, on uh, all mini series models. And here, uh, O3 mini will support all these features, same as O1. Um, and notably, it achieves like comparable better performance than for all on most of the evals. Uh, providing a more cost-effective solution to our developers. Cool. Um, and if we actually unveil the true GPQA diamond performance that I ran a couple of days ago, uh, it's actually also meaning that it's actually 62%, right? We basically ask the model to evaluate itself. Yeah. Right? Next time, you should totally just ask the model to automatically do the evaluation instead of us doing it. Yeah, so with that, um, that's it for Ultra Mini, and I hope our users can have a much better user experience than already next year. Fantastic work. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah, you really so much. Really great work. Yeah, you. thank you. Cool. So I know you're excited to get this in your own hands, um, and we're very working very hard to post train this model to do some uh, safety interventions on top of the model, and we're doing a lot of internal safety testing right now. But something new we're doing this time is we're also opening up this model to external safety testing, starting today with O3 Mini and also eventually with O3. So how do you get early access as a safety researcher or a security researcher? You can go to our website and you can see a form like this one that you see on the screen. And applications for this form are rolling. They'll close on January 10th. And we really invite you to apply. Uh, we're excited to see what kind of things that you can 
explore with this and what kind of um, jailbreaks and other things you discover. Cool. Right. So one other thing that I'm excited to talk about is a, a new report that we published, I think yesterday or today, um, that advances our safety program. And this is a new technique called deliberative alignment. Typically, when we do safety training on top of our models, we're trying to learn this decision boundary of what's safe and what's unsafe, right? And usually it's uh, just through showing examples, pure examples of this is a safe prompt, this is an unsafe prompt. But we can now leverage the reasoning capabilities that we have from our models to find a more accurate safety boundary here. And this technique called deliberative alignment allows us to take a safety spec, allows the model to reason over a prompt, and also just tell, you know, is this a safe prompt or not? Oftentimes within the reasoning, they'll just uncover that, hey, you know, this user's trying to trick me or they're expressing this kind of intent that's hidden. So even if you kind of try to cipher your, your prompts, oftentimes the reasoning will break that. And the primary result you see is in this figure that's shown over here. We have um, our performance on a rejection benchmark on the x-axis and on over refusals on the y-axis. And here uh, to the right is better. So this is our ability to accurately tell when we should reject something. Also our ability to tell when we should refuse something. And typically you think of these two metrics as having some sort of trade-off. It's really hard to do well on yeah, that. Yeah, it is really hard to do, yeah. Um, but it seems with deliberative alignment that we can get these two green points on the top right. Whereas the previous models, the red and blue points, um, signify the performance of our previous models. So we're really starting to leverage safety to get, sorry, leverage reasoning to get better yeah. safety. Yeah, I think this is a really great result of safety. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so to sum this up, O3 Mini and O3. Apply please if you'd like for safety testing to help us uh, test these models as an additional step. We plan to launch O3 Mini around the end of January and full O3 shortly after that, but uh, that will, you know, the more people can help us safety test, the more we can uh, make sure we hit that 